Edmonton, the capital of Alberta, stretches along both banks of the North Saskatchewan River in roughly the centre of the province. The city has had a long rivalry with Calgary, just over two hours south, which claims that Edmonton is a boring government town. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. Edmonton is Alberta's centre for culture, with excellent theatres, top-notch museums, world-class galleries and a thriving musical scene. The folks that live in Edmonton are a stout and hardy breed. The city is among the coldest cities in the world, with a population of over one million. Other members of this elite club include Moscow and Harbin, China. The cold weather doesn't stop Edmontonians from getting out and getting busy at winter festivals and events, including the Deep Freeze Festival and the Ice on White, featuring fun and crazy events sure to beat the winter blues. Learn more about this exciting city with our list of attractions and things to do in Edmonton. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 things to do in Edmonton. And just wait till you see the number one that we're going to be showing in this video. Something you would never even have thought of. So trust me, make sure you watch till the end. Oh, before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press the join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. So now, if you're ready, let's cut to the chase. At 10, K-Days. The greatest event in Edmonton's calendar is the 10-day festival known as K-Days, formerly called Capital X, held every year at the end of July, when the wild days of the 1890 Klondike Gold Rush come to life once more. Yeah! Street parties, dancing, parades, live entertainment, gold panning, yes, gold panning, and a midway liven up the whole city. Visitors who plan to be in Edmonton during the festival should be sure to book accommodation well in advance. Number 9. Reynolds Alberta Museum, Wetaskiwin One hour by car south of downtown Edmonton is the friendly little town of Wetaskiwin. I think I've pronounced that right. Here, the main attraction is the Reynolds Alberta Museum, dedicated to everything to do with aircraft and vehicle construction. There are open-air displays of old agricultural machinery and tools, including some real old dinosaurs, steam tractors, threshing machines, caterpillar tractors and trucks. There are also nearly 100 historic aircraft housed here, as well as in the Canadian Aviation Hall of Fame and numerous vintage motorcycles to admire. A cafe, store and theatre are also located on site, with a good time to visit being one of the regular summer events when a variety of machines and vehicles are operating. Next up at number 8, Art Gallery of Alberta. A twisting modernist building on Sir Winston Churchill Square, the Art Gallery of Alberta in Edmonton is dedicated to visual arts with an emphasis on Western Canada. The gallery features changing and travelling exhibitions and maintains an extensive collection of more than 6,000 pieces. The site also features a gift shop, restaurant and theatre space. Private guided tours are available and can be tailored to suit your particular interests. The facility also offers a variety of educational programs for all ages, as well as lectures and workshops. At 7, Alberta Legislature Building In the midst of a park-like garden where the last Fort Edmonton once stood is the 1913 Legislature Building. It's an imposing and attractive building, and from the terrace there are beautiful views across the North Saskatchewan River to the far bank. Guided tours are the best way to learn about the history of what the locals refer to fondly as the ledge, including its architecture and secrets of the building. A highlight of a visit is spending time wandering the park-like grounds surrounding the building. That's the ledge. Be sure to also visit the nearby Legislative Assembly Visitor Centre, which includes important displays related to local art, culture and history. There's also a cool 4D immersive experience that provides an impressive visual history of the province and its people, as well as a great gift shop selling arts and crafts from across Alberta. Next in at 6, Mutart Conservatory. On the south bank of the North Saskatchewan River, four pyramid-shaped hothouses are home to rare and far-travelled species of plants. Each pyramid features a distinct environment representing different biomes of the world, from the tropical climate of Myanmar, Burma and Fiji, to the temperate pavilion with its American redwoods and Australian eucalyptus. With so many species of plants on display, the conservatory is, well not only crowded, the premier horticultural facility in Edmonton. 
From the high ground above the river, there is a beautiful view of the gleaming pyramids of the Mutard Conservatory against the skyline of Edmonton city centre. At 5, Fort Edmonton Park. Another open-air museum that should be included in your Edmonton travel itinerary, Fort Edmonton Park has old buildings faithfully reconstructed to reflect Edmonton's historical development. The buildings include a typical 1846 fort belonging to the Hudson's Bay Company, a street from a pioneer town of 1885, the up-and-coming provincial capital in 1905, as well as buildings from the 1920s. Among the different forms of old transport, visitors can ride a horse-drawn wagon or a steam train. At the John Jansen Nature Center nearby, there are exhibits about local geology and ecology. And now at number four, Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Village. Established in the 1970s along the Yellowhead Highway, this open-air museum preserves the cultural heritage of the many immigrants from Bukovina and Ukraine who settled in what is now Alberta in the 1890s. Known locally simply as The Village, various historic buildings have been reconstructed on the site and the pale onion dome of a Ukrainian church is visible from afar. There are many living history elements to explore, including a blacksmith, market and an old-fashioned general store. Blacksmith, huh? Part of the fun is the opportunity to interact with the costumed guides, here to explain what life was like for these early settlers. If possible, try to time your visit with one of the many events or workshops hosted throughout the year, from cooking demonstrations to harvest celebrations and a commemoration of Ukraine's National Day. In at three, enjoy nature at Elk Island National Park and Beaver Hills. The National Park is just a 30-minute drive from Edmonton and covers a wooded area with lakes and wetlands and is home to all kinds of wildlife, including moose, elk, deer and beaver. But the main attraction of Elk Island National Park is the large herd of buffalo, or bison, which graze over a special enclosure. Anyone driving slowly along the road through the park cannot fail to catch sight of one of these massive shaggy beasts, hopefully not bumping into them. Fun things to do here in the summer include hiking and biking, kayaking and canoeing, as well as camping, while winter activities include snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. The Beaver Hills area has now been designated as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and includes a dark sky preserve, a bird sanctuary and a wilderness centre. Originally the tribal home of the Saki Indians, it was the Cree, however, that hunted the beaver and buffalo for their pelts, which were then traded with the large fur trading companies. With hunting and settlement, the buffalo were almost wiped out, though some Beaver Hills buffalo are thought to have been captured in 1909 and placed in a reserve of their own. These are the forebears of the animals now living in Elk Island National Park. And now at two, Royal Alberta Museum. The Royal Alberta Museum moved to its new location in 2018 and is now Western Canada's largest museum. Home to a fascinating mix of permanent cultural and natural history exhibits, as well as always changing temporary installations, a visit to this ultra-modern facility is certainly time well spent. Particularly impressive are the many fossils from the dinosaur and ice age eras, a large aquaria of native fish and live insects including some exotic and enormous species. Well, not for me, thanks. New additions include a large feature gallery hosting travelling exhibits from across Canada and around the world, a huge new kids gallery and a bigger bug room with live invertebrates and a visible nursery. No thanks, they freak me out. The museum's cultural history departments explore Aboriginal cultures with artefacts from Blackfoot, Cree and other First Nations. A well-stocked gift shop and a cafe are also located on site. And now at number one, shop and play at West Edmonton Mall. Canada's West Edmonton Mall is not only the country's largest shopping centre and one of the largest in the world, it's also a major tourist attraction on its own. In addition to hundreds of shops and restaurants, as you'd expect, the facility contains a hotel, movie theatres, an ice rink, an aquarium and much, much more. Adding to the appeal are the themed sections of the mall, designed to mimic the feel of the popular travel destinations around the world. In Europa Boulevard, for example, many of the shops have European-style fronts and carry the names of international fashion designers, while Bourbon Street, a copy of the famous New Orleans Street, is the place to visit for Creole food and live music. 
The mall's Galaxy Land is one of the largest covered indoor amusement parks in the world, boasting a variety of family-friendly rides, including a triple-loop roller coaster. Also fun is the recently renovated World Water Park, the largest such attraction in North America. Highlights include the world's biggest indoor wave pool and two 83-foot tall water slides. 83 feet! The park, in fact, has a variety of slides, ranging from beginner to extreme. Wow! And there you have the top 10 things to visit in Edmonton. Did you like what you saw? Well, let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your Canada-loving friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. So, see you next time, travellers!